I was writing a book about the future of fashion, trying to discover what might be happening in fashion in sort of 50 years from now. So I was talking to lots of scientists and engineers, and one of the people I spoke to was a biologist. He was the first person to suggest to me that if you really want to completely rethink how you might create a piece of clothing, that you could imagine growing a dress in a vat of liquid using bacteria. It just blew me away as an idea, and we just carried on the conversation and began to collaborate. We started just growing small trays, me in my bathroom, him in his garage, um, and, you know, just kind of comparing notes on what we were doing with temperature and covering and, you know. Um, but very quickly, we could see that there was something there that was really promising. The process we used was incredibly simple, and actually I realised that it wasn't so difficult to produce something that not only was textile-like in feel, but that I could sew together like a, a normal piece of clothing. And it just shifted my whole thinking in terms of how you might create fashion in the future. Our basic recipe is green tea, sugar, some acetic acid, like a cider vinegar, and then the starter culture. And that's yeast and bacteria, but it comes in the form of a mat. And that mat is, is basically your mother, it's called a mother culture. So that will give birth to something that will grow on the surface of the liquid. And it will take on the shape of whatever your container is. So if you had a star-shaped container, that would be the, the shape of the material that you grew. This is, this is the, the strange thing to get your head around, is that this is a method of producing fashion which is closer to brewing beer or making food than you know, any kind of traditional textile process. Yes, yeah, so this, this, is, this is fading now. It's not as strong as it was as, it, as when it came off the laser cutter. Um, but the, there's no smell really once they've been dyed. Yeah. When it's come straight out of the vat and it's wet, it smells sugary, sweet. Um, once this, is, this was dried, dried down, it's, um, we created a pattern um, for the laser cutter. And it's based on the bacteria and the yeast cells that were used to, to create the material itself. So the long rod shape here, I mean, it's kind of an abstraction, but the, the rod shape is the bacteria and then there are rounder ones that represent the yeast cells that were used. So, you know, the pattern is somewhat abstract, but it's to represent actually what the material, how the material was made in the first place. We collaborate with all sorts of other companies, scientists who are growing materials in the lab using living organisms. And we're helping them to take those materials from the lab to the market. So how do we take these living materials or these materials that have been made from living organisms and imagine the future products for fashion, for apparel, for sportswear? Um, that's what we do. We're a design consultancy. The clothing industry has grown heavily reliant on precious natural resources, be it cotton picked from gigantic fields in India or nylon derived from petroleum products. Once the fabric has been manufactured, cut, sewed and finished into ready-to-wear clothing, most of its leftovers are simply disposed of, creating a chain of waste in each step of the process. But with bioengineered clothing, we have an opportunity to reduce the impact of these old world practices. When you think about something like fermentation and a living organism, um, there's kind of no waste because it's producing both the fiber 
organizing that into a material for you and then ultimately potentially what you're looking at is being able to grow that material onto the form that you want it to take shape as. Right now, we're not genetically engineering that bacteria to produce the material for us. But the future will be about designing the bacteria to spin the thread, to give it the qualities that we want. So if we want it to repel water, we design that into the cell. If we want it to deliver some kind of nutritious quality to your skin, perhaps, that could all be designed into the material. How do you figure out what we're going to be wearing in 50 years? Well, one way of thinking about that is by talking to scientists and engineers who are working in the lab today on new experimental materials or new ways of thinking about manufacture. 90% of the planet is covered in cellulose material. Everybody's so excited about 3D printing, but what I'm excited about is not today's 3D printing, which is still using oil-based petrochemical nasty plastics and filling the world with more plastic. You know, plastic is my nemesis, you know. I want it to be organic and natural and compostable. Most people in fashion textiles are not hanging out with scientists, you know, really doing geeky research and, you know, asking these questions. Because, you know, fashion is, is actually just concerned with what's happening in the next five minutes. And that's become, you know, increasingly the case over the last sort of 20 years. You know, the time frames for thinking and, you know, making stuff happen in fashion have got shorter and shorter and shorter. It's why we call it fast fashion now, you know. Um, there is no time for R&D in fashion.